Prologue A day at the market. Magda threaded her way through the chaos and destruction, frowning at the dead and dying that lay in twisted heaps wherever she looked. Antioch was one of the greatest cities in the Roman Empire. A mecca of trade where powerful merchant houses dealt in vast fortunes of silk and spice, where riches were made and lost in the blink of an eye. And today, it burned. Thin shafts of sunlight cut through the smoke and haze, casting Antioch's market in a surreal light. It had been a warm day and the bustling market had been full of the sounds and smells of life. Vendors hawking fresh fruit piled to overflowing in wicker baskets. Slabs of beef and lamb hung in open stalls for shoppers to inspect, and meats of all kinds sizzled over white hot charcoal, filling the air with the smoky, mouth-watering aroma of roasting flesh. Men and women in colourful clothing exchanged pleasantries. Talking, negotiating, and laughing with one another in tongues familiar and foreign while groups of street children in threadbare clothing raced underfoot. It was deathly silent now except for the lonely wail of an infant somewhere up ahead. Magda drew on her power, shifting her gaze to the world beyond the mundane, wincing at the vileness surrounding her. In most places, the weave that allowed her to exert her will on the world was vibrant and full of life. Here in the market, it was defiled and dim, faded like a tattered curtain too long exposed to the sun. The woman she was after had done this, violating the laws of nature so greatly that reality had struck back, bending and warping the world so where once there was a market full of life, now there was only death. The earth groaned beneath her feet, and she cursed when the aftershock sent her stumbling and staggering along the debris-filled street. Magda managed to catch her balance on an overturned table and narrowed her eyes when she could just make out the shadow of the other woman, her target, snaking her way through the maze of burning tents and stools. To Magda's amazement, the flames never touched her, bending away from her like they were pushed back by some unseen wind whenever she approached. Her first impulse was to draw on the weave and lash out, coaxing the flames to burn her to a crisp where she stood. It would have been easy under normal circumstances, but reality was fragile here, broken and twisted, and she dare not risk the child. Magda knew that once the other woman was beyond the desecrated market, she would be free to use her power, so she decided to act more directly. Magda began a soft chant under her breath, tugging gently at the fragile weave, drinking in what little power she could without doing further damage. Mystical strength flooded her tired limbs, making her quick and strong. Next, she reached out with her will and shifted the debris around the other woman, sending a once colourful tent careening down in front of her. Subtle enough that it looked like a random occurrence, keeping the possibility of backlash to a minimum, but strong enough to send her stumbling to her knees so she could avoid being caught in the flames. Grunting, she raced ahead with superhuman speed, bounding and leaping through the broken marketplace like a stag, her feet hardly touching the ground. In the time it took to draw a breath, Magda was blocking the woman's path, pressing a dagger against her pale throat. Enough of this, Lilith, she said. Look at what you've done, how far you've fallen. Magda had expected her to deny it in some way, to rail against her. But the other woman said nothing, keeping her head bowed and speaking with a soft whisper, You think I did all of this sister, you are sadly mistaken, said Lilith, looking up at her finally. Seeing her face, Magda recalled in disgust, struck speechless by how twisted she had become. When they were children, her parents often joked that Magda was brilliant and wise beyond her years and that Lilith was beautiful beyond measure. She had striking brown eyes, full lips, and a figure that was ripe beyond her years. She'd been breathtaking. Today, her sister openly wore the scars of her many sins. Her once flawless dark skin was a deep shade of blotted crimson, marred by welts and boils. 
Her smile, often praised in song by suitors from far and wide, was a rotting grin, the stink of her breath making Magda gag in revulsion. Even the sacred runes that covered her flesh, the symbols of their people, of their power, had been turned into a mockery. Replaced by a jumble of nonsensical white tattoos that twisted the eye. You have betrayed your oaths and become the very monster that our people were sworn to defend against, said Magda. No sister. We have been lied to so that they may control us. We have so much power, yet we are taught to hold back, hide what we can do from the world, spat Lilith. I have had a vision. We do not have to be servants to Rome. With our power, we can crush them. Rebuild our empire to its ancient glory. Despite the heat and flames surrounding them, Magda's blood ran cold. She had heard this before among the Chosen, the desire to return to the old ways, that the O's people had stood too long in Rome's shadow, and that they deserved to be more than just glorified servants and soldiers. Look around you sister. The old ways lead only to death and destruction. This is why we cannot expose our power to the world, reality strikes back, punishes us, she said, eyeing the squirming bundle in Lilith's arms. The world has forgotten us, it is best that the common man thinks we are little more than fairy tales. Our only hope for survival is to live in the shadows. Lilith scoffed, shaking her head, like vermin scurrying into dim corners, suckling at the teats of a corrupt empire. No sister, we deserve more. Join me and together we can remake the world as we want, a world where the O's can rule once again. Looking at the chaos around her, the dust and ash filling the air, the flames licking at her skin, and the reek of rotting flesh filling her nose, Magda shook her head. No. I don't know how your heart has been corrupted like this, and I don't care. Just give me the child and you can go off and get yourself killed in your mad quest. I won't bear witness to it. Magda's breath caught in her throat when Lilith threw her head back and a raving mad cackle escaped her throat. For a moment she worried that the dark forces she conspired with had broken her mind, that the corruption had taken her, and that she was truly lost. With a burst of speed, she lunged for the child, thinking it might be the only chance to save her only to be blasted back by a gust of stinking wind that made her gag. No sister, you cannot have her. I've paid too high a price. Vesper and I have great plans for our people, snapped Lilith, lucid once more. Vesper. You gave her a Roman name, demanded Magda, sitting up. Lilith scoffed, looking down at the child with a rotting grin. Vesper was an O's name long before it was Roman. Don't you see, the Empire stole our myths, our legends. They even stole the Loe, transforming such powerful creatures into their foolish pantheon of feeble gods. They are nothing but parasites. Magda shook her head in disbelief, amazed that her sister had fallen so far so fast. There are too few of us left. She must be nurtured and protected so that our people can live on. I don't care that you're my blood, if you try to leave with her I will cut you down. No sister, she will be the end of our people. The last of the chosen. But I can stop, without warning the earth heaved once more, and a violent tremor threw them both off balance and tumbling hard to the ground. Magda landed on her back, the wind blasted from her lungs. Part of her just wanted to lay there on the cool stones and catch her breath, let the pain fade away, but the pitiful wails coming from the child forced her to action. Blinking away the dark spots dancing in the corners of her eyes, she rolled to her side just in time to see Lilith scrambling on her hands and knees toward the screaming infant, a frantic look of desperation on her twisted face. With the power of the weave still pulsing through her, Magda was faster moving viper quick and reaching the child first, scooping her up one-handed, and clutching it close to her breast. 
Give me the child or I will burn you where you stand, shouted Lilith, coming to her feet. Magda turned, shielding the child with the body. You would kill your own flesh and blood, for what, some mad dream? For power? No, I don't think so, not after you have spent a lifetime standing against the dark. Are you blind? Can't you see I am no longer the sister you led around by the nose? I have done things you can't imagine, seen things that would have sent you fleeing in horror. Don't think because we share the same blood that I will hesitate to take your life, she said, her voice so cold that Magda took a step back, her brow creasing with worry. She stared deep into her sister's unblinking eyes, searching for any trace of the girl she'd made mud pies with when they were little, some sign of the young woman she'd teased incessantly after every boy in their village had proclaimed his love for her. She wished to catch a glimpse of her friend who would sneak out with her at night to gaze at the stars, dreaming of a brighter future, of how they would escape their tiny village and change the world. The girl I knew is gone, whispered Magda at last, seeing only hate and rage in the other woman. You truly are lost. Your eyes are open at last, said Lilith. Now, give me the child. And for what we once were. I will let you leave in peace. No, she seethed. Never. Very well then, said Lilith, raising her hands and muttering an incantation in a tongue so vile it pained Magda's ear, her droning voice echoing across the burning market. In a panic Magda turned to run, adrenaline surging through her blood, praying that she had the strength and speed to take her beyond whatever horror Lilith was about to unleash. She'd managed a few feet when her way was blocked by a pillar of surging flames that licked at her hair and stung her skin. She pivoted to run back, and another pillar appeared just as quickly behind her, singeing the simple robes she wore. Clutching the child close to her chest, she sang in a loud clear voice, desperately clawing on the ragged tatters of the weave her piercing tenor drowning out Lilith's vile chant for a single moment, calling down a draught of cool air which washed over her, pushing back the scalding flames threatening to engulf her. Covering the child as best she could, she raced through the small opening in the flames, bounding like a gazelle fleeing the lion. Looking past the broken cobblestones at her feet, she caught a brief glimpse of the edge of the market, and she pushed herself faster hope giving her the strength to race on. Without warning she was yanked back violently by an invisible leash tearing at her throat, dragging her back with a jarring yelp. Magda clawed for a grip on the pavement, leaving bloody gashes on the stone, using every bit of her strength to hold on to the baby, wincing in pain at the jagged stone digging into her soft flesh. You still don't understand, said Lilith, appearing above her, yanking hard at the invisible leash to silence her. You think you can take what is mine? No, I will wipe the slate clean, burn away anyone and anything that stands against me. Fighting to breathe, Magda could feel herself fading, the world going dark. Above her the light dimmed, like the sun had been eclipsed, leaving only pale shadows. Lilith please don't do this, she rasped watching as her sister tore at the ragged threads of the weave, drawing torrents of power that rippled through her. Lilith spread her arms wide, and a dark fog erupted from her, rolling over the market, snuffing out every trace of light. Despite the leash tugging at her neck, Magda managed to roll onto her belly, trying to protect the child from what was coming. All around her she was buffeted by a burning wind that sapped her strength and stung her flesh, pulling her apart bit by bit as though she were dust slowly being eroded, falling into nothingness. She opened her mouth to scream, to beg for mercy, but nothing came, only a hoarse whisper. Seeing all hope was lost, she curled up into a ball, the skin on her back and arms peeling away as it burned, her head pounding as if it were in a vice. From the corner of her eye, she watched Lilith weave her arms like a conductor guiding the orchestra to a full crescendo, 
her movements full of tightly controlled rage. A sharp wail pierced her ear, and with a start Magda realised that she was smothering the child. Using the last of her strength she shifted over, giving the small bundle room to see and breathe. Without warning, there was a choking gurgle from Lilith, the world going deathly silent when the vile chant spilling from her throat stopped. Magda looked up to find her sister standing stock still, frozen in place, staring at the child. At first she thought it was a trick of the light, but she swore she could see hints of emerald green shining through the blackness that dominated Lilith's dark eyes. But the longer she looked, the more her eyes changed, light and shadow dancing back and forth, like some battle being waged. I'm sorry Magda, said Lilith. Her voice strained and sounding more like the sister she remembered. I only wanted to make the world better for our people, for her, but I was too weak. Magda looked back at the child to see the same dynamic being played out in its unblinking eyes. Dark tones shifting to light. Green to grey. She shook her head in confusion, not sure what to do until an ear-piercing scream exploded from Lilith's throat, and her body trembled when the torrent of energy she was holding turned back on her. The power of the weave ripping through her like a whirlwind of blades, gnashing and tearing at her hair and skin, leaving deep red gashes along her flesh. In a single moment her body and clothing were in tatters, looking like she'd aged a lifetime, bits and pieces of her flaking away and being carried off on the wind. Magda reached out to touch her, to hold on to some part of her. But she blinked and her sister collapsed into a pile of dust, vanishing as though she never existed. Magda watched with awe while the dark clouds vanished, sunlight returning to the market, shining brightly as if nothing had happened. Dumbfounded, she looked down at the child just in time to see the shadow fade from its eyes, leaving them a deep brown once more. The child smiled at her, and for a moment Magda felt a surge of hope. She would take it home and raise it as her own. The baby would never know what had happened and given time, the world would forget too, just as it always had. She and the dead were the only witnesses and would tell no one. Magda would mourn her sister, but as always it was her duty to protect the legacy of the Chosen, to keep their existence hidden. No matter the cost.